Hello, my name is Julian Edgar and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is take a brief look at the CAM research cars. You've all heard of a CAM back on a car? Well, that originated with these research cars, the three of them, that were produced in the period 1939 to 1941. Let's take a look. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing on this book here, Wunnebald Cam, Pioneer of Modern Automotive Engineering. The book is published by Springer and as far as I'm aware is available only in German. So what were these CAM research vehicles? Well, they were developed at the FKFS Research Center in Germany, which was an automotive research institute. They claim to have drag coefficients of between 0.23 and 0.28. I'll come back to those figures in a minute. And the cars featured some extraordinary other technologies, overdrive transmissions in some of them, a thermostatic cooling duct with a switchable fan, a use of lean air fuel ratios to give reduced fuel consumption in crews. And compared to the vehicles on which they were based, up to 50% less fuel consumption and of course much higher top speeds. So let's take a look at these extraordinary cars. The first one, Cam 1, was built on the chassis of a BMW 328. And here's a BMW 328 and you don't have to be an aerodynamicist to look at those two shapes and work out that one's going to have an extraordinarily low drag compared with the other. Had a three and a half liter engine. The base BMW 328, this vehicle here, had a measured drag coefficient of 0.52, and it would be very close to that, I would think. A top speed of 145 kilometers an hour, and at 100 kilometer an hour constant speed, used 12 liters per 100 kilometers. Cam 1 had a claimed drag coefficient of 0.23, 172 kilometer an hour top speed, and 7.6 litres per 100 kilometres at 100 kilometres an hour. Now, when you look at the 0.23 CD, you really do have to raise your eyebrows a little bit though. And if you do some maths based on those two top speeds and those two different drag coefficients, you'll find that the calculated drag coefficient of CAM1 is probably closer to 0.28 or 0.3. Now it's hard because they were running different air fuel ratios and so the engine powers weren't the same and so on, but it's very unlikely, in my educated opinion, that it had a drag coefficient of only 0.23. But look, at 0.28, 0.3, somewhere around there, it was still absolutely amazing car for the time. And for my money, of the three CAM vehicles, I think it's the prettiest. But I'll come back to that in a moment as well. CAM 2, let's take a look at this. CAM 2 was built on the chassis of a Daimler-Benz 170V, and here it is. And again, uh, you just do a comparison, and you can see how much lower the drag of the vehicle on the left is going to be. It used a 1.7 litre M136 petrol engine. This is the only vehicle of the three that is still exists of the CAM vehicles, uh, and now it actually has an M636 diesel in it. So because it's the only car of the three that remains, it has been tested in a modern wind tunnel, and there it had a drag coefficient of 0.36. So certainly nothing special in today's context, but still in the context of the time, extremely good. The base Daimler Chrysler, or sorry, Daimler Benz 170V, uh, here it is, had a drag coefficient of 0.59. They really were bad in those days, and a top speed of only 102. And this one, as I say, a measured drag coefficient in a modern wind tunnel of 0.36 and a top speed of 127. Okay, what about CAM3? Well, this one I think is the ugliest. It wasn't actually based on the bodywork of another car as such. It, it used a completely new body and chassis, and it used what they called a sheet steel and shell construction. And here it is over here, pictured undergoing torsional testing of the body rigidity. And you can see about the shell internals. It's a, it's a drilled panel, a drilled member, rather like an airship of the 1930s, or like aircraft construction. And it had this uh, bit out the front which supported the engine, a bit like a, a Citroen of, of later times. 
And while the translation of the book makes it hard to be quite precise, it appears that it had something like 10 times the torsional rigidity of the Daimler-Benz 170V on which it was uh, based in part, I suppose. At least it took the suspension and engine from that car. But as I say, it's hard to understand the translation. It, it, it almost looks as if it had one tenth of the structural rigidity, but looking at, looking at this body shape, I'm sure that is not the right way around. Cam 3 had a claimed drag coefficient of 0.25. You know, maybe, maybe more like 0.3. Top speed of 130 kilometres an hour. And from its little engine, it got very good fuel consumption, 6.7 litres per 100 kilometres. Look, we can believe the fuel consumption figures because they're very easy to measure. We can believe the top speed because they're very easy to measure. But the drag coefficient, much harder to measure, especially when you're talking about wind tunnels that didn't have moving floors, didn't have moving wheels, and so on. So they're the three cam vehicles. But there's something else that intrigues me about what they were doing at the time, and that is they were experimenting with fins. So here are fins fitted to a model of Cam 1, and you can see they trialed all sorts of different fins, single fins, dual fins, uh, and then these stepped fins, which are particularly fascinating. Sets of fins with the rear two parts offset, and they actually had a patent on that particular process. And here is, I think it's Cam 1, fitted with the slotted rear fins. I think it looks absolutely magnificent like that. And here it is at 150 kilometres an hour going through the prop wash of this bomber at takeoff uh, propeller speeds. So an immensely strong crosswind and it was doing 150 past uh, the rear of that bomber uh, with uh, uh, its obviously its tail fins. These are actually translucent ones. They made ones out of clear plastic so they weren't quite so visually oppressive. And incidentally notice the swastika. Uh, it appears that all of these cars were funded by uh, research grants from the Third Reich as is so much of that technology of that mid 1930s late 1930s period. Now, what's that got to do with you? Well, I, I'm using fins on the back of my little Honda Insight, and I got the idea directly from those uh, cam cars, uh, where you could see how much more stable they were with some graphs, which I haven't reproduced here. And I think you can certainly take lessons from all those cars. Uh, I'd take some of those drag figures with a grain of salt, but boy, are they ever fantastic, even if, if they were higher than they were absolutely claimed. They're still fantastic figures for the time, and the smooth bodywork, the use of the rear uh, roof line uh, decreasing in, in height until it's cut off abruptly, the, the cam back, all of those things are still relevant today, and I think you can always take inspiration from historic examples. I'd just never copy them uh, without, without any thought, but certainly you can gain stuff from them. And in fact, in my book, this one here on the left, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car, I have a whole chapter looking at interesting historic cars in terms of their aerodynamics. And if you want to be able to measure changes that you are making, I would recommend this book, Car Aerodynamic Testing for Road and Track. It's also available as a Kindle download. Thank you.